Hi everyone, welcome to the sixth installment of Art Class from Home. My name is Evan Furness, I'm the visual arts educator at the gallery, and this week we are taking a look at Tony Olney's artwork, Black Sun. Olney's work often features landscapes that are minimalist, often being reduced to their basic elements of color and shape. There is clearly a suggestion of a landscape in this painting, but Olney doesn't give us all of the details. He only gives us the basic elements of color and shape that he finds in the landscape. This method of abstraction is what this week's activity focuses on. You'll be asked to find a setting outside. You can either see it through your window or actually go outdoors and do this. And you'll be asked to take what you see and try and reduce it down to its simplest forms of color and shape. The demo this week will give you some tips and tricks on how to go about doing that. So thanks for tuning in, check out the demo, and I will see you in the studio. Hi everyone, welcome to the sixth installment of Art Class from Home. This week we are going to be talking about how you can simplify a landscape down to its most basic shapes and colors. Now, to begin with, you're going to want to gather your art supplies together. You'll want a piece of paper, a pencil, and a way to color your artwork in. I have watercolors here, but you can use pencil crayons, you can use markers, even acrylic paint, whatever you have lying around will work for this activity. So once you have your supplies gathered, you want to either set up in front of a window or take it outside um, so that you can get a good look at an outside view. I'm looking through my studio window like I did in our very first art class from home. I'm looking at a barn and a silo as well as a tree line. The first step in simplifying a landscape is just identifying shapes you can actually see outside. If we take a look at this silo, for example, in reality, it is a cylinder. It is a three-dimensional shape. Uh, but if you were just to look at it head on, you can kind of simplify that down as a rectangle with a triangle sitting on top of it. Beside all of these buildings, we have a tree line. And as you'll know if you watched last week's video, these are organic shapes. So there's no real repeatable element to them. Each tree is different from the other, so there's no real way to simplify it down to an exact shape but there is a way that we can and this is where I'll start actually drawing we can break it down into the trunk of the tree and then the foliage the trunk of the tree is pretty easy to do they're kind of just like two straight lines up and then for the foliage we can just generalize we don't have to worry about detail, we can just kind of get the basic way that the tree moves. It's not about detail, it's more about trying to suggest that these are branches coming off the trees. I'm not worried about being as accurate as possible. So there we have our trees. Those are very simple to make. And now we can put in our silo. Now in real life this looks like a the silo is a cylinder but in this drawing we'll represent it as a rectangle because that's what it looks like when we're looking directly when we're looking head on to it and then the top is kind of like a triangle with another little rectangle on the top so now for the barn and back it's really just two rectangles one going across here Those are the sides of the building. And then the roof is just another rectangle with another kind of lighter line in the middle and one at the bottom to show where the, the edge of the roof is. The windows can be reduced down to basic rectangular shapes. And there's a door over on the other side. Again, two rectangles. And then we have this little base for the silo, which again can be shown as a rectangle. 
we have this sort of triangular ish piece coming off with another cylinder that can be represented as a rectangle so our final step for the drawing is to add the horizon line in the background and a tree line which again can just be loosely represented by kind of curves and the road that you can see that goes back there which we can just make as another kind of rectangle so as you can see this isn't a very accurate representation of what we actually see but if we actually look at the shapes that we're seeing it's a good simplification of them you can tell what everything is supposed to be but it's not trying to be completely accurate to life and that's kind of what abstraction and non-representational art is um, it's trying to move away from trying to represent life on a one-to-one -one scale so now all we have to do is add color and it will bring this picture together and the resemblances between what I see outside and what is actually on the page will become a lot stronger. As you can see, just using basic colors and shapes to represent what you see in front of you can go a long way in making a semi-representational drawing. It's not a one-to-one -one description of what you see in front of you, but it does suggest all of the aspects of the landscape that I see in front of me. Even if you're trying to make a very realistic drawing, the method of blocking out the basic shapes is a really good way to at least get started. So now that you've seen me translate a landscape into these simple shapes and colors, it's your turn to do that. Find a spot where you've got a good view of the landscape and try and translate that in the same way that I did in this video. That's all I have for you this week. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week with another video.